Hi, this is Jim Janesey. I'm going to describe for you here project 1.3. This deals with comma-separated variable files, CSV files. If we take a look at a spreadsheet that's data arranged in columns, it looks something like this. Here we have five columns of data, and you can see in the first row that there's a label for the data in that column. In column A we have code, column B we have country, column C we have currency, column D there's a rather lengthy message if one of these here's how many dollars, and in column E we have if one dollar US here's amount of foreign currency. Well it should be fairly obvious what we've got here is a conversion table that shows how various types of currency in the world relate to United States dollars, at least at the time that this chart was composed some time ago. For example, the Australian dollar is abbreviated AUD. If we had one of those, it would be worth 98 cents in American money. If we took one dollar US to Australia, it would be worth one dollar and one cent. Bahamian dollars are worth exactly the same as American dollars. But if you go farther down this list, you'll see that, for example, code CLP, Chilean pesos, apparently are not worth very much in terms of U.S. money. One might be worth two-tenths of one cent, and it would take 476 of them to equal one U.S. dollar. Well, the chart is interesting in itself, but we're not so concerned here about the specific values. What we're looking at is the idea of how is this data actually stored. A spreadsheet is a form of data that's organized by software such as Excel. Excel exists on PCs, it exists on Macs, and various other products exist that mimic the same type of operation as a spreadsheet. However, the data is not necessarily stored in such a plain format because spreadsheets, just like word processors, can do a lot of fancy formatting. And that formatting is information that has to be expressed somehow and stored somehow in the file. So if we take a look at what the data in that spreadsheet actually looks like as it's stored, this is what it looks like if we open it with software that's not designed to deal with the coding that's in place. I open this using Word by opening Word and then using the open function within it to find this file, currencytable.xls, and open it. And Word gives me this screen first because it doesn't actually understand what it's looking at. Some of the information in the file is in what's called plain text form. The words that you can read here are of that form. However, the other values are stored in such a way that this software gets confused. It doesn't know what to do with it. Excel knows what to do with it. That certain information in certain places indicates data goes into a certain column. It's formatted a certain way. But in this case, Word, or any other non-Excel product, would probably be as confused as this. And we see here some strange-looking symbols that just amount to the printable symbols for various ASCII values. It's not the real intent that the data represents that, but this software interpreting those 8-bit patterns as pure ASCII is just displaying whatever that ASCII pattern represents. What we really want to do is come up with an understanding of a format that can convey information between different types of software. And that's what the CSV file format is. It's possible using a spreadsheet program to output, that is to save as, the contents of a spreadsheet in CSV format. And if we do that, we get a file that's named .csv. If we look at it now using Word, or any other program that just copies the ASCII characters to the screen, this is what we would see with the spreadsheet I just demonstrated. The first row, every one of the column headings is separated by a comma. That's how, in this agreed-upon simple format of data, the various columns are separated. We have five columns here, code, country, currency, one message, and then another message. So we have four commas, and they separate that data. If we look at a row of data, instead of the column heading, it's a little clearer. We have AUD, comma, Australian, comma, dollars, comma, and then one value, comma, another value. You'll see that that same pattern repeats, 
except that the commas are not necessarily in the same location in each line because the number of characters in between is different. However, when we go down to East Caribbean dollars, we see something a little bit different. This is code XCD. Notice that there are some quotes in here surrounding Caribbean, comma, East. What's this comma between the word Caribbean and East? Well, it turns out in this case, Caribbean, comma, East is the name of the country, and that comma is actually a part of the data. That comma is not intended to separate columns of data. It is part of the data. In this case, that's why the quotation marks are used to surround Caribbean, comma, East. With those quotation marks, the entire contents between the marks is regarded as data. If those quotation marks were not present, that comma between Caribbean and East would confuse the software that's interpreting this. You see, it would look like we had five commas and not four. The software would be confused and would probably, at this point, start misreading the file because that last value would seem like the first value of the next line. The thing to think about with CSV format is it's just ASCII characters. There's nothing fancy about the format. There's no formatting in there. There's no information except the actual contents of the columns. CSV format is pretty standard amongst most software products so that if you have to get information from one product to another, their inherent formats, that is the formats in which they store data such as spreadsheets, may be far different, but when one software product can output a CSV file, another product can probably read that CSV file and thereby transfer in the content of the data. Not the formatting, but at least the content of the data. Here's what you need to do in this project. I want you to download the first item at this URL and QR code. It's the data that you see represented on this page in Excel 2003 format. I want you to open that spreadsheet using Excel or whatever spreadsheet product you have and take a look at the contents and see that they match what's printed on this page. Then output the data from Excel or from your spreadsheet program as a CSV file and it may be specific to your computer. On a Mac it may even contain CSV and Mac as part of the description. On a PC, it might just say CSV file format. Now take that CSV file that you output and open it using Word or whatever your word processor is. To do this, you can't just click on the file. If you click on the file, the .csv at the end of it in the name will trigger your spreadsheet to open the file. Instead, you want to open your word processor and use its open function to go navigate and find the file and click on it, and that way you'll force your word processor to open up the file as if it were plain text, which in fact the CSV file is. Then, write a one-paragraph report, single-spaced. Compare the data that's presented by Excel and as you see it displayed in Word. In other words, relate the two items together Make sure you can understand the correspondence between the data as presented in spreadsheet form and the data presented in CSV form. I'd like for you to include as a sample the first 12 rows of the data. Now you can just copy and paste that in. And make sure you identify what's different about the rows with code XCD and ANG from the other rows in the CSV file. Keep in mind this information about CSV files. I think you'll come across it later in this unit.